Hello world, this is Jeffrey, JGB 14.6 Blake for Hoopa Hideout, coming to you today with a frequently requested follow-up video to my Dundons and Dragons Roaring Moon review of student play. We're going to do another review, different student. We're going to actually look at two games. We're going to see if we spot any things that our students could have done differently, could have done better. With that said, let's go ahead and dig in now to this uh, first match, which is Dundons and Dragons versus Arctina. We won the coin flip, I believe. Yes. Okay. They chose Tails. It is Tails. We choose to go second. So if we knew what our opponent was playing here, we'd actually maybe choose to go first because they can't do anything turn one uh, going second. Arceus decks really, really thrive on, on going first and trying to get that energy attachment in so they can follow up on turn two with, you know, heavy attacks. We're looking at a mulligan. And here we go. Okay, so we're going to be starting Dunsparce. That's fine. Um, the rest of the hand looks pretty gross, but hopefully we can get something. It'll be a short game if all we have is a Dunsparce in the active. So our opponent didn't have a great start either. They started a Bidoof, but they do have an Ultra Ball. Now, if they miss an energy attachment, that will help us out because we can use that to our advantage in that we'll get an extra turn. So they did Ultra Ball for Arceus V, get him down on the bench. And unfortunately, they do have an energy as well. So now if they're able to get to Arceus V star and we don't have more on the bench, we're in trouble. All right. First decision, uh, we're playing an earthen vessel, discarding the energy, thinning two energies out of that. Great. And then he plays the tracking shoes. I would, hitting energy is so bad right now with us only having the one Dunsparce out. I would play at least one more earthen vessel and I could even see an argument for playing both of them. Uh, that way we get multiple energies in the discard and we remove s the majority of the energy from the deck. It sucks if we get then, you know, Ionode or judged or whatever, which is a likely thing against many Arceus decks, but having the energy in the discard means that it's going to be there if we get Ionode or judged into a supporter. And it's really important that with the trekking shoes, we want to see two cards that are not energy right? We, we want to have a choice between another Pokemon or some kind of ball search, something that's going to get us more resources to continue the game with. So he didn't do that. He played the trekking shoes here. And sure enough, one of the first card he sees is an energy. Thankfully, the second card is a roaring moon. So at this point, we're clearly going to attach an energy to the Roaring Moon. I think we want to play. So he went ahead and just passed here. That's okay. Part of me wants to play a prime catcher to bring Bidoof up. That's going to slow our opponent down a little bit, make them spend an extra resource. Uh, so if they get Arceus V they have to get something else. Now it does sacrifice our only attacker and maybe he's thinking that he'll be able to try to get a knockout on the Bibarel if it evolves, but I would rather require those extra resources and then have the draw guaranteed for next turn. It's, it's close because we don't want to lose our only attacker if they hit enough things, but losing the draw is almost as bad. We'll go ahead 
And we do see a double turbo energy come down. They do have an Ultra Ball. And I'm sure they're getting the V-Star. Now with the V-Star, what are they going to do? Uh, assuming they use their V-Star power immediately, which with one card in deck, I can only imagine that they will. I'm expecting a Bibarel here, as well as... Probably another V Pokemon. Bibarel. And Lost City. And then Boss's Orders. Okay. Uh, that's a little different. I don't... I mean, maybe they're hoping that we're bricking. Which we kind of are. But being able to draw, if we can just get another Pokemon next turn, that's pretty powerful for us. The Lost City is neat in that it doesn't... Let this Roaring Moon up our damage by 10. But I don't know that that's enough. They've used their V-Star power. They only have four cards in deck or in hand. Well, five now that they get the prize for the knockout. Um, the Prime Catcher play to delay the Bibarel is, is actually even better now. Okay, so we have one energy left in deck. I'm okay with playing the trekking shoes here. And given that we're going to draw, I'm I probably go ahead and take the Roaring Moon. Um But this will work as well. Now we're more or less guaranteed the knockout on Bibrel if we can just hit something so we attach I like it eh. I say I like it uh, this is a good example of restraint as he is delaying himself from taking end of turn actions too quickly because as, as we've said with sequencing you want to delay your decision points until the very last moment you can. So here, by not attaching, we get to see what the three cards from Dunsparce are before we attach. That's actually the right way to do it. I fail to follow that uh, more often than I'd, I'd like to admit. So we get a Roaring Moon off of the three cards as well. Now we're attaching. Um... The base Arce Arceus V is going to be able, if it evolves, to do 200 damage, but the big one cannot. So there's an argument for just going ahead and attaching the tool. I like it. Um, I do think we should have waited on the attachments, both for the tool and the energy, until after we played Explorer's Guidance. But I'm fine with it. Otherwise, here the choices. We have to choose another Explorer's Guidance, and I think we have to choose the Dunsparce. Hoping that we'll be able to draw again next turn. Now we don't need to play the Earthen Vessel. We'll look at that uh, once we have more, you know, once we're able to make an attack. It's worth noting, too, that by holding the Earthen Vessel here, we can potentially discard an extra Ancient card to up our damage on the following turn. Our opponent does have a double turbo energy to be able to retreat the Bibarel. Stash and Industrious Incisors to get a fresh new hand of five cards. And we're lucky enough they did not. Wait, they did. Okay, that's confusing to me. I don't know why they would put the Arceus V Star up that has the double turbo on it. 
instead of evolving and putting up the one that doesn't because they're going to whiff knockout here unless they have another um, tool to get rid of our tool unless they have a uh, lost vacuum so that's a bit of a mistake on our opponent's part and yeah they they whiff so that was a a big mistake from our opponent but certainly good for us They're powering up Giratina V, which isn't great for them. Giratina V is, is actually a less effective attacker than a powered up Arceus against most of our, our deck. Um, obviously, Giratina V does knock out our EX. Okay, so we get the Roaring Wind EX. I like it. We get a Dark Patch as well. So now we have two Dark Patches and the EX. I would not bench the EX yet because we don't have enough. We can't retreat the active Pokemon and attack with the Roaring Wind EX. And playing the Earth and Vessel here is actually just kind of bad. So that it increases it increases our damage by 10, but unless that's actually giving us a knockout where we would have missed otherwise, uh, we should have just held the two dark patches, the EX and the uh, and the earthen vessel. Uh, now we're forcing ourselves to attack next turn with the other baby moon and we're down the two dark patches. And in the Dundon and Moon deck, when you're playing this against almost anything, look at the combination of Roaring Moon EX and Dark Patches as a way to get an instant KO on anything. So try to save all of those until you absolutely need to, um, to get that instant KO. And in this case, yes, if we don't draw anything better, then we're probably going to have to spend the dark patches to get the baby moon up. But either way, we can always promote a Dunsparce and see what our whole next hand looks like before we play those cards. If they Iono us or judge us, those are resources that we don't have access to anymore, but that doesn't mean you know we're going to get potentially six cards if they Iono us, which is actually helpful. Um, so I would have not played the Dark Patches or benched the EX. The counter argument is that the EX isn't in danger from anything but the Giratina V-Star. Um, but he's still in danger from the Giratina V-Star. So I would... I, I don't like how we finished that turn. There is a V star. And there's a Toro. That's unfortunate. But it means they're not going to be able to boss up our Roaring Moon EX. Which actually means, again, if we had held our cards until next turn, we'd be taking a knockout on the coming turn. We'd promote Dunsparce, play the double Dark Patch, attach with the uh, energy from the Earthen Vessel, and we'd get a knockout. We don't, you know, we'd be leaving ourselves vulnerable to a knockout as well, but that's not even a big deal. Uh, we'd, we'd get more resources to work with to, to bring back and amp up our attacks further. We do get 
uh, the Dunsparce. I always just evolve the bench when I can do both, uh, just because it's fewer moving pieces. And now we're going to promote the one with three retreat. No, we're just straight promoting Rolling Moon. Uh, I guess we know what our full array of cards are. I don't like that choice, though. Uh, right now, getting another Mooney X, he can get stuck. Uh, we don't need both of these on the bench right now. We'd want one if we could take a knockout with it, but we don't need both. The counter catcher is helpful. And in fact, the counter catcher makes the play that we were talking about last turn even better. We could get rid of the Lost City. We could counter catcher up this Arceus V, uh, just Calamity Storm it away. Uh, their only recourse then would be to attack with Giratina and then they're discarding energies and it's creating a, a much better situation for us. But again, that all comes from not sending, like not saving the resources until the last time we, the last point we can play them. Now, if we have enough to, okay, we don't, I was going to say, if we have enough to Oko this, this Arceus V, then, uh, everything I said is wrong and forget it, but we don't. And taking this odd prize is less useful than taking a, a bigger, like than doing damage on a V or V star. Our opponent plays eerie, which is just ridiculous. When we have a one card hand, they should like their play would be better off. Um, doing anything else. I, and I guess maybe that's a counter argument to what I said in that we are slowing them down since they can't draw cards. But I don't know if we have time for that. Trekking Shoes is great. Nest Ball is not going to get us enough. Neither is that, unfortunately. Might as well bench the moon. Um, I'd actually retreat into the baby moon and I'd attach the ancient booster capsule. Well, I say that. But with the Lost City still in play, maybe maybe letting them take out a Dunsparce is better. It's pretty close either way. Um, at this point, with them getting another knockout, it's very unlikely that we can win. And truth be told, you know, we several, several times didn't hit what we needed. So this was an unlucky game to begin with. And it, it's entirely possible that we could have, the times that I said, oh, well, we could do this better. We could do that better. It might not have made any difference whatsoever. Um, the only thing we know for sure is that we could have gotten a two prize knockout at one point, but even that isn't enough. And now here, attacking with the baby moon, I don't know that this is going to be enough. Make sure we're going to hit for 180. We can follow that up with a, an EX KO, but they're going to be able to take it out with Giratina, unless we can also boss up Giratina. When I say boss, I guess I mean countercatcher. But I think all of our gusting cards are already down. So I think this one's over. Um, but we'll see how it plays out. Judge hurts us a bit, but we probably will be able to draw now. Yep. That we get <laughs> all of our sodas were in the last 10 cards of the deck. That's really unfortunate. Almost all of them anyway. And that's, that's part of what made this, this game such a mess. Um, 
unfortunately we just hit the stuff we needed at the end of the game instead of at the beginning. And sometimes that's going to happen. Our sequencing there early on could have made a little bit of a difference, but it may not have made enough of a difference. Now we do have a knockout, but I don't think it's enough of a, like, Giratina is always going to be able to knock us out. And anything that we do that could knock out Giratina is in turn going to be able to leave. Like it's, it, anything, if we, if we were able to gust Tina up, we'd have to do the, you know, frenzied gouging. And doing that would result in us still losing. Now, okay. If that tool can stick and they can't get a boss's orders, we still have a shot. Those are two big ifs, but... They're no less real. I'm okay. I'm okay with this. Um, we want to have, we want to hit the energy next time. And we're pretty much guaranteed to now. We can use the Dundons to make sure that we don't deck out while still drawing everything we need. They promoted the Arceus, so they are hoping that they're going to be able to delay things. Oh, they have an iron leaves. So that's going to, that's going to be it. Um, but there's the end. We did make the strongest plays we could. Um, it's just some, some messy sequencing and the slight misplay about the rowing moon, you know, benching it and then dark patching to the baby. Um, and like I say, when we're hitting, you know, when all of our sodas are in the final 10 to 15 cards of the deck, that's, that's just an issue. You know, we, we can't, you can't, if you're not hitting any resources ever, you can't come back from that. Um, but there were a few things we could have done better. Hopefully seeing and hearing about those are helpful. Let's look at game two. And this is uh, versus Charizard. And once again, we get to choose and we are choosing again to go second. Um, he doesn't know he's against Charizard. I spilled the beans or the tea, whichever term you want to use. And we have to start Roaring Moon X. That's never ideal, but that's okay. It's unlikely that we'll get a turn one KO. But again, that's okay. They also won't get one on their turn two. Buddy Buddy Coffin. And we're looking at a triple Charmander plus Pidgey selection. That seems like a mistake unless our opponent had no other options. Um, generally speaking, from the Charizard side, you want to have either two Charmanders and two Pidgeys or two Charmanders, a Pidgey and a Bidoof. 
something so that you don't have only one potential drawing card uh, left out so that, that doesn't become a potential target okay so looking at our hand what is the proper play I'll let you think for a second and now I'll talk about my thoughts so I believe that we want a nest ball for radiant Greninja assuming he's in deck then we want to play earthen vessel and discard this energy and get two more then we'll use radiant Greninja to conceal cards and draw two more cards that way um, the, by doing this we have thinned out some energy so we're less likely to draw into more energy we have two energy in the discard so if we draw into a sada and have a way to get another ancient pokemon out we're kind of rolling that way and um yeah we haven't removed any resources that we need from play so that's what i'd like to to see how to how does my student play it? Earth of Vessel, discarding the energy. Good. Get two more. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nest Ball. Good. And he's trying to decide what to get here. Looking at the board state, he does see that there's a Dunsparce. Or a Dunsparce in his hand. He gets the Dunsparce. Since we don't have Greninja, we obviously couldn't get Greninja. But I would probably have still gotten the baby roaring moon. Well, no, I take that back. I would, I agree with his choice there. Um, here, we don't really need the vessel. I don't like the ultra ball. Um, okay, so our choices are trekking shoes, earthen vessel, artisan, dark energy. Ultra Ball and Roaring Moon. I'm, I'm good with getting the Roaring Moon. That seems good. Uh, I'm also like two other important cards here. The Trekking Shoes to dig deeper since we don't have Greninja. That's kind of important. And the Artisan to be able to stream Pokemon is, is good too. I realize that Artisan helps our opponent out. But what we may be seeing by the fact that they got three Charmanders, it may be an indication that all they have in deck, the only meaningful basics, are Charmanders. That they've prized the other Pidgey and the other, uh, and the only Bidoof. So I think that makes it worthwhile to go ahead and get the Artisan to help stream more Pokemon for us. Uh, I don't think the Ultra Ball is in any way necessary. So I would, over the Ultra Ball, I would get either Artisan or Tracking Shoes, either one. Playing Ultra Ball, we're getting rid of Penny and an Explorer's Guidance. The problem with doing this is that we're limiting our our next turn, right? Um, we only like we've we've reduced the number of supporters we have for drawing deeper into the deck, and we definitely don't need to get. A second EX. They can't take a knockout this turn no matter what happens. If anything, I think this should be another Dunsparce. Do you see? Arvin with a poking gear. It's strange seeing a Charizard build that plays poking gear. So this is a non-standard build. Um, there we see maximum belt. So they can get a knockout this turn if they hit everything else. Let's see Ultra Ball. And I'm 
assuming they're just going to grab, well, they could grab Pidgeot or uh, Charizard. The game doesn't want us to know. Rare Candy into Charizard. Okay, so they did not get the Pidgeot EX. They play Infernal Rain. Maximum belt comes down to achieve knockout on Roaring Moon EX. So that's unfortunate. But the fact that we're playing a weird version of the deck could be quite helpful to us. A boss's orders is not going to help. And we will go ahead and um, play the Dunsparce. Now, I don't like the Explorer's Guidance play there. Um, I'd rather draw with the Dunsparce first. Because ultimately, if we just attack, if we hit Asada and we just attack with the Baby Moon, we're going to set up a 2-hit KO on Charizard. As is, we're sort of having to get lucky and Dark Patch onto the baby, which is not ideal. And then we're still going to end up attacking with the, the baby moon, but in a less ideal situation. Now, fortunately, we have an Ancient Booster Capsule and their maximum belt will not increase the damage against our baby moon so we will be able to take the first part of a two hit ko this way we see a boss's orders as they decide to go ahead and knock out our other Roaring Moon EX. <sighs> and um, they've now achieved a four prize lead. So um, for this particular matchup, there's definitely an argument that uh, the tool here is the ideal play. At this point, I think... I think our play is actually Explorer's Guidance. We're going to try to get some more Ancient cards in the discard. We hit for 150 last time. So we've already got 150, plus they took a knockout. So that's 160, 170. With this Energy Capsule going down, that makes 180. And I think I like these choices too. Keeping the Dark Patch very helpful for later on. I'm iffy about whether to keep that one or save it. I think letting the second one go. Because we have Sada, Patch, Energy. We can instantly power up any of our attackers now. And uh, like we said, we hit the perfect math to be able to hit the KO here. Send up an empty Charmander, non energized Charmander. And I have no, they, they bench a new one. Okay. And they attach 
um, energy to the bench. So they typically, typically would expect them to only have two energy left in deck. Okay, and then they Iana themselves to two cards where we have four and we have built in draw with some of our Pokemon. That's actually really good for us. They don't have any draw Pokemon in play. Um, we're going to be able to get a lot going here. So Nest Ball makes us make a decision. I think Guidance is better to play first. We can get the Dunsparce. We can have a Sada for next turn. I think those are the optimal choices here. The Dark Patch isn't a bad selection either. But the way things are looking, we may not even need it. So I think I think I take the Sada. And then here I play the Nest Ball before we do the Dunsparce. I make a choice on what I want. And uh, that way we're less likely to draw into it with Dunsparce. Uh, once again, I don't like playing the Dark Patch the second we see it because it's better saved for when we need it, in my opinion. I also would have used at least one of those Nest Balls to get another Dunsparce. I can, I can see arguments for only using one of them, but... I strongly wish we had held the, the Dark Patch. See another Pidgey come down, which we probably would have seen last turn, so that must have been their top deck. And now we're seeing Earth Vessels. We might as well Earth and Vessel away um, something. Uh, getting rid of a Moon there is totally fine. And in fact, we can do the same thing again, just to increase our damage that much further. Uh, looking through, we might as well Nest Ball for another Dunsparce. And now we hit the Radiant Greninja. Uh, at this point, Radiant Greninja is almost not meaningful to us. But I suppose he could help us out still. And somehow... Oh, and we even got boss's orders. Okay. Somehow we went from... From being blown out of the water to them just completely bricking after that initial setup. Um, that was a huge comeback. I had some minor issues along the way with some of the selections, but nothing major. Uh, my only big thing here is just saying, you know, there were times when we wasted dark patches that we didn't need to. Uh, we could have held them, maybe had a better play later on, but... Honestly, the way that that turned out with the, the Charizard deck just totally breaking after they got four prizes. I mean, that was kind of crazy to see, but certainly certainly worked out in, in our favor. Um, so I don't, I don't do anything any different by any means um, other than the, the little notes I had along the way. With that, we're going to go ahead and stop this video. Uh, I feel like the main thing that is a takeaway from here is the concept that if you hold the Dark Patches and the Moony Xs until you need them, A, you prevent your opponent from getting as many two prize knockouts when you don't have Moon ready to go. And second, B, you... Uh, Enable yourself to have that that big swing of going from, okay, I don't have anything set up to I'm able to knock out anything um, all 
in one swing. So I, I really like holding those those resources in hand until I'm going to use them. Um, I don't want them to end up getting wasted. And I don't want to use them on the single prize moons unless it's necessary to keep progressing our turn. And when I say necessary, I mean like we're not going to be able to attack without doing it. Now then, with all of that said, I think we actually saw a lot more decent play in, in this than in my previous video, so that's good. And I applaud my student, Chris, for um, the, the good plays there, because there were a lot of things that Chris did right. Now then, uh, we'll go ahead, wrap up. I'll be back soon with more content. Thanks for watching.